Can you hear me? Oh, you can hear me. Lord, I don't know the words to that, but it sure gets me moving. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning. I'm Carolyn Bailey. I'm a member of Unity of the Hill Country, where we offer a positive path for spiritual living. The Daily Word has been given the Worldwide Ministry Movement of Daily Word since July of 19 and 24. Today's reader is Mr. Bailey. Would you like to come forward? <laughs> and just to let you know, he's very new at speaking. <laughs> Thank you, my darling. Oh, hallelujah. I'm reading a section of the Daily Word called Glory. That is one of my favorite words. I walk around here, I walk around my house, I walk around the shopping mall saying glory. And of course, people look at me almost as strange as they do in church. <laughs> but joy, I do too, one of my favorites. Thank you. I want to do as good as you did last week in glory. I celebrate the glory of God in myself and others, in you. Aren't we glad we have a church 
that we can come to with friends who have glory all over them? Oh, you're beautiful. Today is August 25. Magnificence, radiance, and tremendous power. These are all inspiring qualities that describe the glory of God. Because I'm a living expression of spirit, these glorious attributes are also part of my spiritual nature. And the peace of prayer, exquisite awareness of God's glory, fills my mind and heart. I was reading, I think it was one of Charles Fillmore's book about transience and about letting the glow even come forth. You know, Jesus was transfigured right in front of other people, it's mostly his disciples. And what would you think if that happened to any of us or all of us? Wow. Everyone is God's living expression. Did I skip something? Good, thank you. I got caught up in that transfiguration. Everyone is God's living expression. A reflection of divine glory, just as I am. Even when my limited human perception has not yet perceived it, my faith shows me this truth about every person I meet. As my awareness of glory within awakens today, right now, spiritual wisdom, understanding, and love teach me to cooperate with all who are seeking to build greater harmony. Abundance and compassion among all humankind and the world's creatures. Somebody's thrown out a cat or two or three or even hundreds now around my street, and I feed feral cats. And I give them names. And now they become just, you know, routine. I've got a new one that Carolyn calls Pete and his brother, Repeat. <laughs> I like that. I, I forgot how to come up with new names sometime, and I, Eeny, Meeny, Mighty Moo, and Moo. And they know their names, and they come when I call. Oh, glory. The glory that you have been given, the glory that you have given me, I have given them, that they all may be one as we are one. John 17, 22. Am I right or wrong? That was the prayer. In John 17, to prepare him for the ultimate call to give his life because he loves the, all the world so much that any of us and all of us who believe shall be called and are called the sons of God. Carolyn told me one time, and, and bless you, Thank you that you married me. She told me to quit the time to move it on. She said, son, you know, it's always a male. Well, you know, we're all children of God, sons of God in that power and that glory. I love it, don't you? God bless. Are you coming back? Okay. <laughs> Come rescue me. Bless you, girl. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The Unity Movement was started back in 1888 when Myrtle Fillmore was cured of tuberculosis. Tuberculosis was common in her family and she was told that this was her destination to die of tuberculosis. And one evening she went and listened to a speaker who said, you are a child of God, and you were created in perfection, and you do not have to accept illness. 
And that was a real revelation for her. And she started changing the way she was praying and started looking at her life in a very deep spiritual way and she was cured of tuberculosis. And if any of you have not read her story, I would ask you to look it up and read it. It's quite profound. Unity has, we believe in prayer and our campus in uh, Missouri uh, has a prayer tower that they have 24 hours of praying. And we have a prayer box back here that you can put a prayer request in and that is sent along with our prayers people who pray here and they will take those requests and there is a 24 hour chain of prayer that goes on for 30 days for the needs that are requested so if any of you have a prayer request of whatever or for whoever please feel free to put that prayer request in our little prayer box out here thank you You can um, please take a moment now to silence your phones so that it does not s disturb our gathering. Please join me in affirming our mission and vision statement to live consciously celebrating the divine potential in all as well as unity statement of faith. There is only one presence and one power active in my life and in the universe, God, the good, the omnipotent. And we are now going to have our meditation song, I Am So Blessed. And then we will follow with Reverend Sandra, Sandra's message. Thank you. <laughs> so blessed I am so blessed 
so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. Indeed, we have come together today, blessed, blessed in so many ways, blessed with love, blessed with divine guidance, blessed. With gratitude. So I'm going to share from the Silent Unity Prayer Service、uh, pieces from that. It is done every week, and it is done around the world with prayer groups. And so, in relaxing for this, we retreat from the external activities. Just for a little while, we anchor our awareness in God, in good, in our innate divine identity, acknowledging that the source of all we need for the fullness of life is within us and around us. We breathe in. And we breathe out. And so, your mind and your heart are steeped in peace. I'm going to affirm this for you, and you can affirm it for yourself. Your mind and your heart are steeped. In peace, relaxing and breathing easily, let your thoughts quiet into peace. Let your body respond to the signal of peace. Realize that your heart beats in a slow, steady rhythm. In peace, and in this peace, we attune to the vitality, the infinite vitality of the Christ. God is vitality, and the energy by which we thrive. Every cell. Every system and the function of our bodies respond to an infinite vitality. Divine light and divine life permeates our thoughts and our feelings. It permeates our thoughts, our feelings, our intentions, and our actions. We choose and affirm well-being, health, wholeness, and vitality. For indeed, we are divine humans, worthy and wondrous. Realizing our oneness, we calm all the. That is, and we claim our divine potential. We recognize the divine light in others. We behold the truth that we are light. We claim our unique talents and abilities. 
we cultivate spiritual gifts and talents. We experience peace and wisdom and vitality and abundance and gratitude, and we let it shine. We let it shine into the world. As we go into the silence, we allow ourselves to feel this wholeness. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Great Creator. Thank you. Thank you. We return to this time and space, allowing ourselves the opportunity to see the Christ in those who are seat seated around us. So I invite you to open your eyes, look around, and see the Christ present. Oh, you Christ present, aren't you wonderful? Well, you know, I've told y'all before, I like being here. I like y'all. I have a history of with you. Um, and this morning as I was opening up my um, little piece, my briefcase, I came upon this pencil and it says, Heart of Texas Retreat. Do y'all know what this is from? This is from the Heart of Texas Retreat that you used to sponsor back in the 80s and 90s. And I still have this pencil. I used to come to that retreat. I loved it. So, just know that you've been a part of my heart for a long, long time. Now, I know that most people in unity kind of squirm at the Old Testament, at even mention of the Old Testament. I mean, I don't want to talk about the Old Testament. You know, that's that old stuff that let us look at the New Testament where there's the light of Jesus and the, the love and the positive. But we're going to look at the Old Testament today and the Tower of Babel. So the talk title today is Babel's Ambition, The Perils of Seeking Power Without Limit. And I think y'all are going to be rather surprised to see how relevant it is today. So let's just look at that. So the story of the Tower of Babel is an intriguing story. It, it tells of humanity's ambitions, unity, and the ultimate failure due to pride. And at first glance, it seems that it's a simple story about a group of people who were trying to build a tall tower, build something <laughs> to God. And the lessons that are embedded are profound and as relevant today as they were back in the day. So as a short reminder, the Tower of Babel was a structure that was built after the flood. And there were people who were very happy to celebrate God, and they wanted to show just how they could do that and how powerful they were. So they went about building this tower, and they're going to build the largest tower. And they're all in unity, and they're working really well together. But then they recognize that it becomes about pride. It becomes about how much can I do and how good can I be? And are you going to understand that I'm better than? Are you going to get that message? Because that's what I'm doing. Is I'm building something to show my power and my strength. Now, I don't know that that happens today, but maybe. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. We'll let you decide that. But So first of all, I want you to know the name Babel. Actually, 
means confusion. And it represents mental chaos as a result of thinking wholly from a materialistic point of view. Now, I, would, I think I can safely say that our um, world has gotten pretty materialistic, right? I mean, it's how much can we get? What toy can I have? Can my toy be bigger than your toy? You know, so we get into that competition and we can see how that could happen in this building of the tower because these folks who have been through the big, come from the flood are interested in proving that they're better than. And they're living in mental chaos as a result of thinking just about the stuff. I've never thought just about the stuff. I'm sure you haven't either. So in the beginning, there was unity. They were working together, as I said, and then they began to be in conflict. And when this happened, God looked down. Okay, we know that God doesn't look down, but we think of it that way, at least back in the Old Testament. God looked down, and he saw this one very good. You know, he's just put out a, a flood to get some people to be cleansed and think anew. And now he's got people wanting to do that thing again. And so he looks down and he goes, I'm not going to kill everybody again. However, I will make it so they can't speak to each other. And I'm going to spread them out all over the place. So they're going to have a hard time working together. Oh, my goodness, don't we do that? So if we are going to glorify God, how are we going to do that? If we're driven by the wrong motives, if it's not about God, if it's not about service to others, then we need a new lesson, don't we? We need to think anew. We need to think anew. So what this experience is, is an experience of illusion. We're talking about fear. We're talking about separation from God. We're talking about that place within us where we think that we're it. Now, we have God within us. We have the Christ presence in all that we do. But for me to think that I'm the one and that I have all the power is really missing the point. And that sometimes sounds like ego. Well, we probably could call it ego. So ego is an illusion. Ego is an illusion that is about the self, it's a false identity, and it creates a separation. And that that counters it is love and forgiveness and that place of knowing oneness. Ego believes in fear and conflict. The ego is driven by fear and guilt and a sense of lack. Anybody ever been there? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll just say that I have. And, and the ego is always looking for validation. And it's rooted in that belief that we're better than, that we're the one. It's rooted in judgment, conflict, and suffering. Don't you find yourself suffering when you get to that place? Yeah, I do. So... God responded by taking everything apart, recognizing that we become fragmented when we want to be the one. But we know that God is omnipresent, all-powerful. God is. And so what are we going to focus on here? Why does this have to be? Do we have to live this way? Or is there some other way that we can find our place of oneness and wholeness? Can we get back to that? Just some interesting facts about the Tower of Babel. Noah was still alive when it was built. And according to scripture, he lived 350 years after the flood, which means that he was 950 years old when this was built. Anybody want to live 950 years? No. God, we have a lot of good sense here, yeah. 
So he was still alive when his uh, grandson, Nimrod, rose to power and began building the tower. And it was built in Iraq, Iraq, sorry. It is, um, it's about 30 miles from Baghdad. <laughs> yeah, and there's remains. So I found that to be pretty uh, interesting. So if we're gonna undo the ego, if we're going to live in the place of oneness and wholeness of God, we're gonna have to do some forgiving. We're gonna have to give good for those false ideas and actions. We're going to have to give good. Now, you all know that I love forgiveness and I talk about it a lot and I do a forgiveness workshop. When I talk about giving good for bad, that doesn't mean that we're gonna go to the person that's hurt us and go do something good for them, but it does mean that we're gonna reach out past our personality ego to somehow serve mankind, humankind, womankind. It means going past what we see and what we judge to find that place of peace, that place where we can say, oh, this happened, but there's more. And then we begin to find gratitude. We may not know why something happened, and we may never know why something happened, and we may not even <laughs> want to know why something happened, I find that more and more. I don't know, want to know why, but it happened. And now I want to get to a place of being in peace. It <laughs> happened, and now let me go on with my life. Oh, I think I needed to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> so, ego versus the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a voice of truth, love, and guidance. <clears throat> the ego speaks from separation and fear. The Holy Spirit offers a way back to peace and the knowing of oneness. You know, we've never separated, really. It's a false separation. So when we're getting back to oneness with God, it's only that we're remembering our oneness with God and we're letting go that false belief of separation. <clears throat> so let us reflect on our own lives. Do you have a tower that you're building in your life? Is there something that you want to show the rest of the world that you're better than everyone else? Do you know someone that's doing that? Have you seen it happen? And is there a place for us to come back into the oneness that we truly are? Are we willing to align with our hearts and God's will? Are we willing to put aside differences to be in oneness? for a common cause. It's the strongest, most powerful thing we can do is to come together for a common cause, to come together in service of others. Y'all do that. I was here early this morning and I watched you. And you were all about getting things together. This community is a community of oneness. It's a community of love. And that's what you're about. And that's what we want to be about because it is there that we find peace. It is there that we find truth, unity. You know, our name says it, but we sometimes forget it. Unity, how powerful is unity? How powerful is coming together? Y'all had a, a clothing sale. Did one person do that? Oh. No. <laughs> Maybe if one person felt like they did a lot of it, but you do it together. You do it together and that's where your power is. That's where your power is when you come into here and you pray and you celebrate and you find the good and you look for the good. History shows that before the uh, collapse of many of our great communities, you know, way back when, we saw the collapse of some communities. And that was when there was a leader that felt like they were the best and that they were most powerful. And when that happened, things started to fall apart and started to splinter because it is our power to be together. 
to be in the oneness, to know that we are one. That first, that opening song, I felt like Brad must have selected that or whomever selected it. Selected that because that's what we're talking about today. That's what it's about, the oneness. And I was going to do this at the No, I'll still do it at the end. We are one. So I want to invite you to say that. We are one. Our power lies in our oneness. Our power lies in our oneness. And so let us break down that judgment, that fear to be, to be fully present to the good that we have, to celebrate, to be grateful. Can you do that? Are you willing to do that? Because your homework is to look to see if you have a tower that's being built and if it is something that you want to bring down. And so instead of breaking into many languages, let's come together in one language, the language of love, the language of peace, the language of harmony, that language that speaks the word unity. And so I would like to have some music played, if we may, because this is so powerful. Think about the power, think about splitting apart, and think about coming together, because this is how we do it. All that breaking apart means nothing. It is this that we're about.
down this way for those. I'm going to keep going. So in case, you, you don't have to get up. Stay down. We're, we're, gonna, we're working with it. It's all right. So I want us to notice how together we are. <laughs> so do y'all know that we're together, that we're one energy, that we're one power? Yes. yes. Okay, we're going to demonstrate it right now. Is everybody connected? Yes. Okay. That's energy. That is energy running through us. Somebody drop a hand. Oh, now reconnect. Yes, we are one. You can go down to one finger too and it'll get real slow and yeah. But we are one. We are one. You get it? You Let's affirm that together. We are one. We are one. <laughs> Hallelujah. Gather up one more time, just to, just to prove it. We are one. We are. We share our life in the community. In the divinity. Amen. And namaste. <laughs> Thank you. And now, Carolyn, I'll let you go about the service. <laughs> You're good. You're good. <laughs> well demonstrated. Thank you. Thank you. I'm still back. <sighs> Folks, if this is your first time at Unity, we are glad you're here. And we hope that you are finding a place of like-minded people and a place to belong. We teach spiritual tools that can help you no matter what is going on in your life. Is there anybody new here for the first time? Wonderful. If you are interested in a welcome packet, an usher can bring you one, or you can grab one on your way out. Please fill out the contact Form if you wish to be part of our weekly mail email uh, newsletter. We now have an opportunity to support our spiritual cooperative. If you would like to donate by credit card, go to our website, unityhillcountry.org, and click on the donate button or to scan the QR code on your handouts. Please consider setting up an automatic, an automatic monthly contribution. If you would prefer to mail us a check, please send them to ten, uh, Unity of the Hill Country, 1016 Jefferson Street, Kerrville, Texas, 78028. We thank you in advance for your generosity. Please bless what you are giving now and join me in our offering affirm affirmation together divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that i am all that i give and all that i receive and i send it forth with my blessings and my love and i thank you We are now have Money is coming to me. Money, Money is, is coming, coming to, me. to me. Money keeps coming to me. Money is coming to me. Woo. Money, Money keeps coming to me. me. No. Money. open 
our hearts in gratitude as we release these donations. We send these gifts forward through our creation and into our world, blessing all that it affects. And I thank you. Some community announcements. Next week is Celebration Sunday. Celebration Sunday is the first Sunday of every month, and we have a cake. Everybody gets a little bit of sweets. By the way, I want to let you know that Mr. J. Bailey will be speaking next Sunday. <laughs> Prepare yourself. We nearly made $400 on a clothing exchange, and we thank you to everyone that helped. <laughs> Folks, we have reached the end of our gathering. Please rise up, circle up, join hands, and we'll do the peace song and our power, uh, prayer of protection, which is very powerful.